In this video, I'll explain how I figured out that this side of the compressor was faulty and why I ended up ordering the uh, the piston service kit, uh, model uh, 320303. So the important thing about this uh, dual uh, or twin Airb air compressor is that it's more than a decade old. It's been in here for quite a while. If I'm lucky, I may be able to see the uh, date code underneath this once I start pulling it apart. You'll see in this video how I figured out that it was faulty, why I determined these parts were needed, and I'll also show you how I'll replace those pieces. And after that, I'll show you how I changed the part with the new part that's in this box to be able to uh, bring this thing back to life. Recently, while checking the output capacity between the XJ, which has a single air compressor, I realized that there was at least something wrong with the one in the CJ. So it has a dual air pump, but for some reason, uh, it was outputting pretty much the exact same output as a single, which led me to find a burnt fuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this burnt fuse and try to figure out when the, the fuse burns. So these 40 amp fuses definitely need a little bit of power to get them out. So depending on how long they've been in there, they may, de may need a little bit of finessing like I just did. So this one, we can clearly see that it's burnt. Putting in the same size unit. Crazy how, how tight that is. Try not to bend the fuse tabs. All right, that'll do the trick. So I've got a amp probe. So I've got it set to the 400 scale just because uh, this is a 40 amp and for it to burn, it has to go over 40 amps. So now I'll start the vehicle, turn on the air compressor. We'll see what happens. I already have an air line connected it to be able to free out some air to see what happens. <laughs> Yours is still intact, so maybe I was lucky and something jammed at one point and now it's cleared. So those results were actually better than I thought they'd be. Uh, so what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to add air directly into a tire, see if that does anything. Uh, the uh, compressors definitely draw more current under load than just free air. I'll put this back together, make sure the fuse is properly covered. Maybe we got lucky. So I just aired up tires and uh, everything was working as it should until the end where I turned off the valve. The uh, manifold uh, went up to its maximum pressure. Then the pressure switch uh, turned off the pumps. But somewhere between airing up the tires up to 36 PSI and the system turning off, the fuse is burnt. So I'm going to change it, try again and see if I can capture when the fuse blows and roughly at what uh, amperage draw.
So clearly when I was doing some testing, uh, there's something wrong with this compressor. That's the one where the fuse was blown. Uh, at the end of my uh, attempt, it started to sound a little bit like a marble mixer or a coffee grinder. So I'm going to remove the end cap here and see if there's anything clearly wrong. Uh, these are 10 mil bolts, so pretty easy to get to, even with uh, this fresh air inlet that goes into the cab. So I'm very curious to see what is hiding behind here, because it definitely didn't sound right. So there's a gasket here, just want to make sure I don't lose it. Pull it off now and put it aside. Oh, yeah, this is broken. Clearly that shouldn't be happening. All right, let's take apart the other side, see what it looks like. Ah, uh, this one clearly was on tighter than the other one. So we'll see what this one looks like. At least it'll give me an idea of what it should look like. I'll be able to determine what I'm going to do for uh, as a solution to, the, to my problem. Again, there's a O-ring here. It's on the side. Actually, it's not even there. Oh, it's on the back of the cover. So if I compare a good one, uh, it does move, just not as much. Clearly, there's a sleeve there. It's almost like the bearing itself failed. Because this one does move, just not as much. All right, a little bit more digging. So it's pretty interesting seeing the, uh, the condition of this one here. We can see that the bearing, whatever type it was before, is totally worn out. Whereas the one on the right here, the bearing still works. It, it does allow the piston to move a little bit on the shaft, but not enough to bind against the edge. Uh, so the other interesting part after looking at that so if we look at the inside of the uh, cover, the one on the right, the one that's in good condition, is still nice and clean except for the dust that transferred while it was taken apart. Uh, the other one, there's clearly a lot, a lot of crud. So I'm not sure if something got into the system at one point uh, or if it was just failure of the components and it getting getting dirty. So I'll go have a look at the parts diagrams to figure out what I can and can't do. And then I'll uh, order whatever parts are needed to uh, put this back to life. So now it's time to tear this apart. I'll remove the end caps that I reinstalled earlier just to, while I was waiting for the parts. And the important thing is just to make sure that all the parts that you're removing, you don't lose them and you keep them clean so that when you go to reinstall or reassemble this, you'll have all the pieces and that they'll be in good condition. Every installation is a little different, so you're gonna have to figure this out on your own. But I found out pretty quick that it was easier to take off these two 10 mil bolts per compressor than it was to uh, trying to unthread them. So the important part is each side has a, has a grommet, O-ring, you wanna make sure you don't lose them. There is one airline on the dual. If you have a single, you have a slightly different setup. Of course, you gotta unplug all your wires. And now my fun is gonna be figuring out how it's bolted to the vehicle. And this one turns out that all four bolts on this side and four bolts on this side were installed. They had some Loctite for obvious reasons because this will definitely vibrate a fair bit. And now I can pull the unit out and bring it to the workbench. So once the compressor is out, do what you can to give it a quick cleaning. Just make sure that you don't get more crud into the openings than you have to, because, well, you're going to have to clean those out after. My goal is as much as possible just to take apart this half of the unit, since that's the one that will need servicing. And on this unit, there is a cover plate that, that goes on the middle. And as you can see here, this unit in the past was was 
was repaired. Uh, so the uh, the wires are no longer disconnectable. So it's going to be a little bit more work. So I'll see if I can take this apart without having to cut and re-solder these. And uh, hopefully I get lucky. Uh, there are quite a few little bolts, so this cover comes off. And if I'm lucky, the whole unit will just flip out the way it should. So now I'm going to disconnect the pressure switch. Be important to remember to reconnect that when it's time to reassemble it. I can just flip it back and it's out of the way. This, this is very similar to a single ARB air compressor. They are a tad different, but not by much. And what happens, you have one that curves to the top here, another one that curves to the bottom there. And the important part is there's a bolt. I believe it's again number 10. Down here it is. A little bit tighter, but it's coming out. And it goes through the pressure switch all the way to the back of the pump. And it's out. This is what it should look like. Now the uh, that unit there is free, however, it's still held in the place by the anodized piece, which is a cooling device, a heat sink. They don't have to be removed, they just have to be loosened enough that it will, won't clamp on the pump. Then you can feel the unit. So then you can just slide it back like that. And does this one have a date code on it? It did at one point. It was my guess, so it's 0628. So yeah, it's definitely uh, had a good life. And now once we have it here, it's a question of removing the piston. Number 10, you should be careful that whatever crud you have falls outside of the unit. Last thing you want is for that to get inside your pump. So I will have to do a little bit of cleaning inside the pump because there's definitely been some metal shavings in there for a little bit. And I want to give the new pieces a, as good of a chance as I can. So there's a little bit of wear up here, but it doesn't seem to be anything significant. So you can see where the it was flopping and hitting the back or the top of the piston instead of just going up and down correctly. I'm actually going to get the shop vac out, give it a quick uh, vacuum. So there's a five millimeter bolt in here, which they include in the new kit. And the fun thing with this kit is it actually works for both the older models that were built or manufactured after, before August 2017 and after August 2017. So what changed is this. So the, the bolt on the newer ones is much bigger. And on the older ones, such as this one, it's much smaller. So these have a tendency of being a little bit weaker, easier to shear. These are a little bit more rugged. They also include two different little uh, snap rings. So you have to use, I'm not sure if they're both identical. I'll find that out pretty quick. All the bearings that were inside have fallen out. So I'll just have to make sure that I clean all of that nicely so that I don't end up with any surprises in the future. So at this stage, I have to remove the bolt that is bolted to the end, the motor. Uh, so th this little guy in my case, uh, maybe a little slightly bigger bolt, uh, depending on what you have. So the instructions mentioned to block these, uh, the piston by putting in a screwdriver or something so that it won't turn. And they also say to warm up the bolt. Uh, the reason for that is that they actually put Loctite on this. So you want to make sure that the Loctite softens before you try to ream on it. It's a little bolt, you don't want to end up uh, shearing it off with just brute force.
So that didn't work out too well or wasn't giving me the result I was hoping for. So I'm gonna hope for the best. Give it a little bit of a zip with the impact and hope for the best. So I'll turn it up one notch. Came out, woohoo, in one piece. So now I get to remove the old piece, the old bolt, the old sleeve. You can even see that they've changed the sleeve since uh, this was manufactured. They now have a, a spot where uh, they add a C-clip so that it actually stays in place and doesn't tend to walk over time. And well, now I can see a bunch of little bearings all over the place. So I'm going to pull out the vacuum, clean that out, give the inside of that area a good, good little wipe down so that I start assembling into uh, a clean area. So it's pretty cool seeing the, the wear on uh, the, the pistons. You can see on the, on the right, the new one, all the bear, ball bearings. The one on the left, they're long gone. So uh, totally explains everything that was happening. So feed the piston wall into your cylinder. Make sure that you're ready for it to uh, be held in place so that it doesn't pop out. Uh, put some red Loctite on the fastener. Start threading it in. Uh, depending on where the uh, motor is in its rotation, this may or may not work. You may have to move the motor. There we go. Let's try this again. And once the fastener is fully seated uh, by hand, I'll use a torque wrench. Just be careful that the piston doesn't pop out because it's kind of important. So I have a, the smaller fastener, so I have to torque it to 10 Newton meter. So 10 Newton meter, here we go. Kind of feels like it's getting to be a little too much. I'm gonna call that good because once that once that uh, dries, that ain't going anywhere. So now it's just a question of uh, reassembling it. Uh, pretty much the opposite of taking it apart. Just lay this in. Give myself a little bit of breathing room by turning it like that. Reinstalling the end cap, just make sure that the O-ring is still there. If there's any crud, clean it out. I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on the other fasteners just to make sure that it doesn't come apart over time. Uh, these parts aren't spinning, so I'm not worried about them as much as the part that holds the cylinder in place. The instructions do, don't say how tight to reassemble this, so I'm going to be using my good judgment here. Slides back in. Like that. Again, double check that the seal is still on that piece as well. Can feel it. Sure that it there we go it slides in so on the cap i can clearly see that there's a lot a lot of uh, crud i give it another wipe down looks like most of it came out by tapping on the workbench a few times again you want to make sure that the o-ring is still there 
Actually, I'm noticing something interesting here. It looks like the O-ring at the end had a little bit of gasket maker. So that probably lived right. Yeah, that lived right there. So I will put a dab in there as well. And I will also put a dab of, lock, of blue Loctite on this one. So it doesn't need a lot. Just make sure that it's cleaned up before you put any more on it. A little bit of dab. Spin it a few times just to make sure that there's... There's some of it everywhere. Keep it from leaking. A bit more blue on these threads. And we want the uh, pressure switch towards the top. So I'll tighten up these now because this Reassembly has repositioned the compressor within its heat sink. Reconnect the pressure switch. Doesn't really matter which side, it just completes a contact. Big harness this down to the right spot. There, something like that. And it's just a question of uh, reinstalling these these fasteners. These I won't worry about uh, Loctite. They're easy to get to if I uh, if I notice that they're getting loose in the future. While I was fighting with this, I was having a hard time. Then I realized that the wires to the pressure switch were pinched between this black cover. And the anodized blue heat sink. So just double check that they're sitting correctly. Uh, I did have to fight with these four bolts to finally get everything aligned correctly but it's back in one piece. Now it's time to reinstall the compressor in the vehicle. So I'm going to reinstall all these uh, these eight fasteners underneath it with a little bit of blue Loctite that'll give it a better chance uh, from vibrating free. After that, I'll reconnect everything else. Now that I've waited more than two hours for the Loctite at the motor to cure, I can start it up and see that there's no, to double check that there's no air leaks. If there is one, it would be at this fitting. That's the only fitting I, I disassembled. And after that, I'll do a few uh, checks to make sure that they're both working, both pumps. So I've already installed a new fuse. Kind of cool hearing the fan kick in uh, when it's on. Hadn't realized that before. Always using it with the vehicle off, which is a smart thing to do. It's not good for the battery. So yeah, I wasn't sure if there was an air leak, but it's clearly just the fan cooling. Let's turn on the lockers. Got both lockers enabled. Seems to be holding air pressure, which is a good thing. Not feeling any leaks here. I am feeling a little bit of airflow, but that this fan here is, is working. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If uh, you liked what you saw, please subscribe. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any comments to make things better in the future, let me know. Always appreciate positive feedback to uh, do a better job of sharing information. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.